You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. And yes, can you believe it? The Democrats have went full-blown totalitarian. We are entering the first stages of totalitarianism. I actually think it's like the second, third stage. Real totalitarianism started during COVID. That's, that's when I think it happened. And you can actually argue it started during the Patriot Act after 9-11. So you can really, that's what I think that the really started creeping in, but you didn't have this mindset of we're running out of things to do, so we're just going to start using the intel agencies against Americans, that kind of attitude. And then you make it even worse by saying MAGA, MAGA supporters are domestic terrorists, okay? And you start classifying Americans as domestic terrorists. That's when you start having what we're seeing now, which is totalitarianism. So I'm just going to come out right out the gate and say it, that the Democrat Party is the most destructive political force this nation has ever seen, ever. When I was a Democrat, we were not like this. This is insane. What price is too high to get Donald Trump? The destruction of our entire country and all of its institutions, the trust and credibility in uh, in our rule rule of law, in our justice system? I don't think so. I don't think so. But that's certainly what you're seeing. And these people are more than willing to bring it all down to get Donald Trump. It's, it's truly bizarre. And one thing I will say is I, I'm, I have this gift of like seeing patterns and I could, I could see things over the horizon based off of those patterns. And one of the things I'm seeing right now is a repeat of the Russia collusion hoax. That's what this is. Little different here and there, little different twists and turns. But for the most part, it's going to be a repeat of Russia collusion hoax. And it's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight years of lies, manipulation, propaganda, gaslighting. But in the end, you're going to have a lot of upset Democrats. That's what's going to happen. And frankly, you know, as depressing as it sounds, I don't think it's ever going to end. It's not going to end. These people have officially lost their minds. They are psychologically and emotionally broken. They are mentally ill. These are ill people. They are sick. When you sit here and you cheer for the indictment of the former president of the United States, that if convicted will be sent to his death, I would say you're sick. You have lost your mind. And so this points to my question I'm always asking, that the $100,000 question, is Trump derangement syndrome a mental illness? Is TDS a mental illness? I think it is. I think it needs to be classified as a mental illness. I think we have millions of Americans suffering from a psychological disorder That when they hear the name Trump or everything they think about is Trump, everything. When they go to bed, they think about it. When they wake up, they think about it. When they go to work, they think about it. When they talk to their friends, they think about it. When they're on their phones, on social media, they think about it. Everything they do is about Donald Trump. It is truly bizarre behavior. It really is. And I don't know if we'll ever figure out exactly what it stemmed from. But I have a pretty good idea that it's all came from the media. There's just no doubt about it. The media has ruined these people. (laughs) Because what happened was the media in 2016 essentially picked sides. So media is always supposed to kind of be in the middle. They're supposed, supposed to speak truth to power. Well, what happened was is the media got Trump derangement syndrome. And so they picked the side. And just like the totalitarian regimes in the past, like the Nazi party, the Soviet Union, Castro, they picked the wrong side. And so the media picked the wrong side. So they've always been in this uphill battle of trying to convince Americans 
that Donald Trump is evil, that he's worse than Pol Pot and Hitler. Well, that's just not the case. And so what they do is they're constantly trying to get this this narrative. They're trying they're constantly trying to get this persuasion. And it's just not true. And they can't get it. It's like fitting the square inside the circle. You just can't do it. That, that, that dog is not going to hunt. And so what instead of them just giving up and being like, OK, this is the guy they voted for. I guess we'll just move on. Better luck next time. No, they went batshit crazy. They went the exact opposite. They went full blown totalitarian and where they were done trying to persuade. At this point, they're done trying to persuade. They got the keys to the castle. They got the power. They're giving people the bird and they're saying there ain't nothing you could do to stop us. And they will wreck and destroy and steamroll every single government institution that we have, democracy and the trust and trans and transparency in the rule of law. They will destroy everything to get the Donald Trump. And that is exactly what we're watching. That is what these indictments are showing everybody. And I'm sorry, but even people that I know that don't like Donald Trump, they see right through this. And I'm telling you, I'm starting to see a breakthrough for some of these people because they're saying to themselves, this is awful. They're not saying to themselves, they're saying to me, this is awful. Does that mean they're going to vote for Donald Trump? No, but at least they're starting to see. And I'm, t I'm not talking radical leftists. You're never going to get through to those people. I'm talking about sane, rational Democrats that are saying this is awful. So they asked themselves the question today. So are we saying that Jack Smith is indicting Donald Trump because he thought he won the election? So this indictment is, a, is against Donald Trump's First Amendment right, the free speech. You're literally indicting, they're indicting free speech, which isn't, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because Democrats have been on the side of censorship for the last 10 years. When that changed, I have no idea. It certainly wasn't like that when I was a Democrat, but it is now. And we have a poll that just came out where 70 percent of Democrats support mass censorship by the government, which means they want the government to be the arbiters of truth. I don't know when all this happened. You have Democrats that actively like war now. They want to be in war. When that happened, I have no idea. You have Democrats that support open borders. Not secure borders, not the Fence Act. I'm talking open borders, wide open borders. When that happened, I have no idea. But apparently all this happened when Donald Trump won the election. So like I said, Donald Trump has psychologically broken this party. It is done. It's finished. They have turned into totalitarian Nazi, uh, Nazi occupationers. That is what this is. They turned into... A, a Nazi regime, a totalitarian regime. That is what we're watching. And I think a lot of this, and, and sometimes I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I'm not seeing that light so much yet. I kind of see it way off in the distance, but I see a lot more pain coming. And I got an article here that just kind of solidifies my thought on that. So this article, hat tip to Darlene McCormick, and it's dated July 30th, 2023. So it was just a couple days ago. And the top law schools promote ditching the Constitution. I think it's stuff like this, which is what is what happened to the Democrat Party. A massive, massive portion of the Democrat Party hates this country. They hate the Constitution. They think it's old and outdated. They want to change it. They hate the Supreme Court. They hate the Electoral College. They hate free speech like they hate the Constitution. And now there's proof. So think tanks contend that radicalization of attorney education threatens American freedom in a never before seen way. So in almost every state, law students who pass their state bar examination, which allows them to practice law, take an oath to support the U.S. Constitution. But the country's top law schools teach future lawyers and judges the opposite. Many now teach that America's Constitution, the supreme law of the nation since its ratification in 1788, is broken and should be scrapped. At least that's what two members of conservative think tanks believe after reviewing courses at the country's top 10 law schools, as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report in 2022. They examined that teaching at Yale, Stanford, Harvard, and Columbia universities and others 
Law professors at elite schools are open about their disdain for the U.S. Constitution, the researchers found. Quote, they're saying they want to get rid of the Constitution. They're making no secret about it, said Christian Adams, president and general counsel of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. He also worked for the U.S. Department of Justice. A senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation's Edwin Meese Center and former DOJ counsel agreed. The radicalization of law schools threatens freedom not previously encountered in the nation's history. Quote, in fact, some of them are very direct in teaching kids that they need to be revolutionaries. According to these courses that these law school students are taking, he told the Epic Times. Yeah, so that is what we're watching right now. These are the revolutionaries. These people that want to, that support the indicting, the indictment of former presidents, that support the banning of the Constitution, that support the censorship of, of the, your First Amendment right. These people on every single level are revolutionaries. And the revolution is here, folks, and they are here to change the country forever. I've been saying this for months. They want to destroy this country so that they can rebuild it in their own image, in their own little perfect utopia without capitalism. OK, this new renewable energy for everything. No free speech where the government controls what people th say. And it's going to look just like a George Orwell's novel, the 1984 novel. That's what it's going to look like. That's the America Democrats want for you. And this, what we're witnessing right now with the indictment of the former president, and mind you, it's not just the former president. You have 16 Republicans that were indicted in Michigan for signing the alternate slate of electors. Those people were indicted and have convicted their, their medium age is 72 years old, I think, the, the average age. If convicted, they'll essentially be sent to their deaths. And that is what they want to do to Donald Trump. They want to send him to his death. These are the people we're talking about. These are not normal people. These are not rational, reasonable people. When you want to send the former president of the United States to his death, you have issues. And it's not one or two or three. It's not, the, it's not just the radicals. It's millions of people. They are mentally ill. They are sick. And so this is what we're dealing with. And... These colleges and these universities are the creators of this. These universities are sending out revolutionaries. That is what they're doing. If you send your kid to college, you are willing to risk them being a revolutionary and coming out and being a radical leftist Democrat that hates the country, don't believe in God, don't believe in anything but themselves, that want to change the country. Okay? Anybody that wants to change this country does not like this country because people don't want to change what they like. Uh, it's like telling your wife, oh, you know, you're so beautiful, but you should change your hair and you should go change your nose and get a new chin, you know, get plastic surgery and get a boob job. No, you don't want to change what you already love. And so anybody that says they want to change the Constitution, and scrap it. It's because they don't like it to begin with. You see, I hope I'm explaining it well. Sometimes I don't necessarily do that. I sometimes I struggle getting out what's on my head uh, out to you guys in a understandable way. So hopefully I did. So I think that's where a lot of this this stuff is drawing from is the colleges and universities. They are creating a bunch of fascists. These these college professors are teaching kids that the Constitution sucks and it needs to be changed. And what's really scary is these students are coming out and they're going to be lawyers, they're going to be prosecutors, and they're going to be federal prosecutors and judges. This is terrifying to me because you're going to have a bunch of Jack Smiths running around, people that do not care about the law just so long as the ends justify the means. In other words, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And it doesn't matter how many freaking eggs you break, and it doesn't matter if you get an omelet or not. We're, that's essentially what Jack Smith is. That's his mindset. That's all these people's mindset. And the problem is, is revolutionaries don't really realize they're revolutionaries until it's too late. You know, everybody thinks they're on the right side. You know, I've said this for a long time. Hitler did not rise to power by himself. He had millions of supporters. You don't know you're in a cult until you're out of the cult. You see what I'm saying? It's not like these people realize that they're acting like a bunch of Nazis from, from 
Nazi Germany in the 1930s. They don't see that. They will only see it after the damage has been done. You know, the, the supporters of the Nazi regime, they supported everything. They supported all of it. And, and then what happened was when things went bad, and then essentially the world had to kick its ass and basically bitch slap it in the face and say, look, what are you doing? Then they woke up and they're like, whoa, I can't believe we were part of this. And then what happens, though, is they just kind of recede back into the shadows of society, never to admit to their mistakes. And they never will. And they never have. But there was millions of people that supported Adolf Hitler going in and invading all these other countries, the slaughter of, of Jews. And in fact, you had the New York Times covering for it. The New York Times, our media was exactly the same way back in the 1930s during World War II. The same way it would cover up from certain, for certain things. It would manipulate the people. It would spread propaganda. And because it, it was covering up for what was happening in the wars in Europe. And it wasn't being honest with the American people. So the Americans didn't know that Jews were being slaughtered. And so we got involved, obviously, in Pearl Harbor. We were kind of isolationists. And that is because the New York Times was covering for Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. And they did the same thing for Castro. You can look all this up. It's all, it's all there. The New York Times is an awful outlet. And still to this day, they're, in, they're doing the same thing. They manipulate the minds of the people through propaganda. And just like the Nazis did in Adolf Hitler, these Democrats today are supporting something very, very destructive. And just like I said in the beginning of the show, the Democrat Party is the most destructive political force this nation has ever seen. And they don't even realize the destruction they're doing. They have no clue until down the road when the system turns on them. Because revolutionaries always eat themselves. Always. Because they're revolutionaries. And so they won't realize, just like, uh, what's his name, Yuri Bezmenov said, you could show them files, you could show them pictures and documents, you can show them, you can show them receipts, you can show them a laptop, you can show them anything, but only until they see the concentration camps with their own eyes will they finally believe. But until then, it's all hell to pay. And that's exactly what we're going through now. These people don't realize the destruction that they're causing this country. They never think that far ahead. They never do with anything. And in fact, I told I had a conversation with a guy today on Twitter, like the complete lack of self-awareness is astounding in the Democrat Party. And the reason why they don't have self-awareness is because their hatred for Donald Trump overwhelms that it overrides their their reason and rationale, because any normal person, as soon as as soon as the Department of Justice comes out and says, oh, well, we're indicting the former president, be like, whoa, what? Really? No, not these people. They completely normalized it. And so they're changing right now. They're changing our country forever. They're setting precedent that will live on forever. And when that precedent is the destruction of freedoms and liberties, indictments of former presidents, sending random uh, slate of electors up in Michigan to their deaths, you know, you're changing the country forever. And so this country from here on out is forever changed. And believe, I think it's already been destroyed. This republic has been destroyed and they don't even realize it. They have destroyed the credibility, the trust and credibility in our, in our government institutions. They're destroying our education system. They're destroying our electoral system. They're destroying our economy. They're destroying everything. They are destroying people's lives and they don't even realize it. And, that, and that's the issue. Getting them to realize it is going to take a lot of pain and anguish. Only until it turns around on them will they finally realize the damage that they have caused. Just like the Nazis, just like the supporters of the Nazi regime back in the 1930s during Hitler's reign. Same thing. The cult members never know they're in a cult until they're out of the cult. And so this is, why, this is exactly why it worries me when you have universities producing a bunch of revolutionaries. So when you have college universities like Harvard and Stanford, these people come out and they become judges, okay? How are you going to feel as a conservative going in front of one of these judges that were essentially indoctrinated to hate the Constitution? What do you think that Constitution is going to mean to that judge? What do you think your rights are going to mean to that judge? Nothing, because they were taught to hate it. They were taught that it was old and outdated. And so you have judges that are essentially doing what Jack Smith is doing, just making up laws. They just make them up on how they feel. 
they're not reading the Constitution. They're they're not following the law of our land. They're just kind of making stuff up. And so this is concerning to me. And we have a this is a multi generational thing. So these kids, these students coming out of these these top law schools are going to be federal prosecutors and they're going to be judges. And what you're going to get is a bunch of judges like we're seeing right now. Donald Trump cannot get a fair case anywhere in Washington, D.C. The whole notion of indicting a president and expecting him to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. is asinine. It is completely asinine. And these people know he's not going to get a fair trial, but they want that. They don't want him having a fair trial because to them, the ends justify the means. So if that means you got to crush somebody's due process and you got to crush somebody's God-given rights, then that's what you got to do. This is what happens. This is how revolutionaries roll. This is what they do. And this is why they're destroying the country and they don't even realize it. They don't even realize it. And this kind of segues me into my next, my next story here that I wanted to share with you. So you guys know how big of a, how anti-vaccine mandate I was. I'm not anti-vax, okay? I'm anti-mandate. Okay, because I don't think you should be forcing people to do something against their will, because anything the government touches, it destroys. Same thing goes for the left, not Democrats, the left. There's a difference. But anything the left touches, it ruins. And anything the government touches, it ruins. And vaccines and vaccine mandates and the federal government do not mix and should never, ever go together again. And I warn people over and over and over again about these mandates. And what happened was, is the same way that I'm warning people now that they need to pay attention and they better pay attention because we have the rise of a totalitarian regime, this Biden administration, they're not going to pay attention until it's too late. So I tried warning people about the vaccine mandates. I told people, if you do not get up and start getting involved and start shouting from the rooftops that you absolutely reject the notion that the federal government is going to force a experimental vaccine into the arms of Americans, it was going to come back and bite them in the ass. And what happened? Well, they ignored it. They kept their head in the sand. They didn't get involved because uh, they don't get involved in politics. They're not into that. And I said, you better pay attention. You better start shouting out because it's going to come back around. And sure enough, how many friends of mine, really close friends of mine, was forced to take a vaccine that they did not want to take because they had to choose between taking a vaccine from the United States government or losing their livelihood. And so obviously they had a pretty big decision to make. And and so they had to ask themselves, do I want to keep my job, lose my house and put my family in the gutter, maybe possibly living on the streets or just take this shot in the arm from the government? And so what did they do? They took the shot in the arm from the government. Well, now those same people that came to me, you know, telling me that I was worrying too much and, you know, I'm conspiracy theorist and the the government would never mandate anything like that. The government can't do that. Well, the mRNA COVID jabs have caused silent heart damage to tens of millions of people, a shocking new study suggests. Moderna's COVID booster caused one in 35 people to have heart injuries detectable with blood tests. Swiss doctors report. Will the Centers for Disease Control or American researchers take note? So this is an article, Substack article from Alex Berenson, dated July 27th. A dose of Moderna's COVID jab injured the hearts of about 3% of people who received it. Swiss researchers have found the vaccinated people did not show obvious signs of heart damage. But when researchers ran blood tests three days after the jabs, they found high levels of troponin, a protein the heart releases when it is injured in many recipients. Quote, subclinical mRNA vaccine associated myocardial injury is much more common than estimated based on passive surveillance. The researchers concluded the paper was published last week in a peer-reviewed European journal of heart failure. Over 1 billion people have received mRNA jabs. The study suggests tens of millions of them may have suffered heart damage and don't even know they've been hurt. Yeah, this is why you do not allow the government to force vaccines on the people. This is why you do not allow mandates from a federal government. 
And this is why I'm begging people. I'm begging people to get involved and start paying attention to what is going on. Because the same thing, what we witnessed in the COVID vaccine mandates from this totalitarian Biden regime is the same thing we're going to witness once they're finished with Donald Trump. If they get their way, free speech will be gone. Our our electoral system will be changed forever and our country will be changed forever. What they're doing with these indictments is changing our country forever. It is bringing this country down a dark, dark path. And the COVID vaccine mandates were a live, real-time experiment of that. It was a 50-year revolution that happened in two years. You had a, a government that felt like it knew best for everybody. You had experts that were essentially saying, we know better, you need to do what we say. And then you had the government censoring the truth from people and doctors and scientists that were rejecting the idea that vaccines need to be mandated on people. And it was the only way to get through the, the, the pandemic. Okay, this is why you do not allow vaccine mandates. This is why you don't keep your head in the sand, because one day it's going to come and it's going to be knocking on your door and you're not even going to realize it until it's too late. What's going to happen is, is you're going to let this totalitarian regime rise to power, this Biden administration, this corrupt bureaucracy, this establishment, Washington swamp, that this fourth branch of government that has been created the last three decades inside of our government. You're going to allow these people to take full and open control of all of our country, all of our government institutions, our taxpayer funded institutions. And one day they're going to be knocking on your door asking why you missed paying $50 in taxes that one year, and you're going to be going to jail. You support Trump? Oh, buddy, you're going you're going away. Just like those 16 people in Michigan that are indicted for signing a piece of paper saying that there were going to be alternate electors for the election. Perfectly legal theory, perfectly fine, and these people may be convicted and sentenced to their death. This is what happens. This is why I'm warning people, I'm begging people to get involved. I know people don't like politics. I know people don't like getting involved, but you need to speak up. I promise you, I promise you with everything that is holy to me, that if you allow this kind of behavior from this federal government, from this fourth branch of government, you will regret it one day because one day it will be coming after you. I promise. Once they're through with Trump and everybody in his orbit, they're going to start coming after individual Trump supporters after they're done with the lawyers and they're going to be targeting people, probably using things like the IRS, which is not unheard of. You notice how they just got 87,000 IRS agents. Oh, yeah, that's not for the rich people. Trust me, they don't need 87,000 IRS agents to audit rich people. No, no, that's for us. And you do something that the government doesn't like, you descend away from the the narrative, the official narrative. Mm, you may have miscalculated a hundred dollars in taxes a couple years ago, and you might be you might be having to go with them. You might have to do some time. Oh, and you're a Republican. You're a registered Republican. Whew. Don't let them find that out because you're going to be sitting one of in front of one of these in front of one of these college students, these law students that are graduated and are judges now that were indoctrinated into thinking the Constitution doesn't exist. So if the Constitution doesn't exist, the Bill of Rights doesn't exist. If the Bill of Rights doesn't exist, your rights don't exist. Your right to free speech, all your God-given rights don't exist. Your fifth, your Fourth Amendment, your Fifth Amendment, all of them gone. Because why would you have those? This judge that graduated and was indoctrinated by these professors that said the Constitution needs to be scrapped, they're not going to follow the Constitution. So why would you get a fair trial as a Republican in one of these in one in front of one of these judges? And so the covid the the covid pandemic and the vaccine mandates is as close to totalitarianism this country has ever seen ever, not modern history ever was the day that they came out and started saying OSHA is mandating vaccines and if you don't get the vaccine, you will be fired. You will lose your job. You will be on the street if you don't take this vaccine. And guess what happened? 
Well, you got silent heart damage in tens of millions of people. Telling you folks, it's not good. And the worst part about it is you can't even sue these pharmaceutical companies. Can't even touch them. So if you do have some kind of heart damage you don't know about or you find out later down the road, this is why I'm so glad I did not take the vaccine. So glad. And I'm not knocking on anybody that did. I don't blame you. It was an impossible ultimatum that this this corrupt totalitarian Biden re- regime put us in. You either had to pick from your livelihood or take a shot. It was the most disgusting thing I think I've ever experienced in my entire life. But it wasn't as worse as them making loved ones die alone in the hospitals. Saying goodbye to your loved ones through an iPad. Think about that. That is by far the biggest atrocity I've ever experienced in my entire life. Having loved ones die alone in a room by themselves. Saying goodbye to their loved ones through an iPad. Nobody should ever forget what this administration did to you and did to these loved ones that had to die alone. Never. And mind you, all of the help from the media. All of this. All of this has been pushed. All these narratives, all these lies, all the manipulation, all pushed by a corrupt, politicized media. A media that picked the wrong side. The press has failed us. This government has failed us. This administration has failed us. All our government institutions have failed us. When you have an FBI that is spending more time locking up American citizens than it is going and locking up sex traffickers and child predators, the FBI has failed us. When you have an FBI that lies to the American people and says a laptop with clearly, clearly corrupt, damaging evidence against the sitting president, When they lie to the American people and say that it was Russian disinformation, they have failed us. When they get an illegal FISA warrant because they used a a fake dossier and lied to a FISA court, all paid for by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign, and they use that to get a warrant to spy on an American citizen and and a sitting president, the FBI has failed us. All these institutions are failing. They're failing. They got to go. There's no recovering these things. I'm sorry. There's not. There's no recovering the FBI. There's no recovering the DOJ. There's no recovering the Department of Education. The school system has completely failed our children. Generational damage was done because of the pandemic. They closed down the schools in some cases for three years. Has caused multi-generational damage. The schools have failed us. The Department of Education has failed us. The CDC has failed us. And this administration has failed us. So there's one more thing I wanted to get into. Um, so this is some good news just to leave on a, on, on, a, on a happy footing here. I got some hope after reading this. High school boys are twice as likely to be conservative as liberal, survey finds. So high school boys are becoming increasingly Republican. According to a federal survey administered by the University of Michigan, males in their senior year are nearly twice as likely to be conservative as liberal. The annual Monitoring the Future survey, a schoolery project that dates to the 1970s, found that in each of the past three years, just 13 percent of those boys self-identified as liberal or very liberal. On the other hand, the number of male seniors who call themselves conservative or very conservative ranged between 23 and 25 percent. The results of the 2022 survey were released this week. There is a gender gap, though. The same survey found that over the three years between 2020 and 2022, the share of senior class girls who identified as conservative or very conservative averaged 13 percent. By contrast, the same three-year period saw an average of almost 29% of girls this age call themselves liberal or very liberal. A report in The Hill also cautioned that the largest group of senior boys in the 2022 survey claimed no politics at all, answering none of the above or I don't know when offered the liberal conservative choices on how they identify ideologically. So this means if they're going to college, they're going to come out a radical leftist revolutionary. If they go into trade school or trade craft like construction, 
be an electrician, plumber, you know, coming out of high school, making decent money with no debt, they're most likely going to be conservative. This is just the case now. Our colleges and universities are producing revolutionary leftists. That's what they're producing. So you have college professors that are indoctrinating kids. And so when these kids leave college, you get a bunch of Biden administration cabinet members. That's what you get. You get a bunch of Jack Smiths. You get a bunch of, of Jen Psaki's and Kareem Jean-Pierre's. That's what you get. <laughs> so, but I did have a little bit of hope in the, in the conservatives. I think, I think conservatives are coming around. I think the idea of conservatism is catching on. Um, it was, and, and I joined the conservative movement when conservatism wasn't even cool. The reason I joined conservatism was because I grew up. You guys know what you call a, I think it goes something like that. You guys know what you call a Democrat that grows wise, right? A conservative. So that's exactly what happened to me. I just, I had kids. I grew up. I, you know, started working in, I started my career, got into the workforce. And when that, when that happens and you actually experience real life and get a piece of reality, you most likely go conservative or libertarian. Never left, never left. So our Democrat party is filled with a bunch of college educated revolutionaries that have been indoctrinated by college professors. That are going on to be doctors and lawyers and judges. The worst, the the worst possible thing I can think of. So every major part of society, this is why you're seeing such crazy weirdness happening through our society, is because the colleges and universities are indoctrinating kids, indoctrinating students, and sending them out with no skills other just to be woke social justice warriors, <laughs> which is pretty disheartening. So there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about. I got a few minutes left. I want to see if I can't see if I can't squeeze a couple more things in here. I, I could I could seriously talk about the Trump indictment for hours, but I can't because first of all, everybody's talking about it. And second of all, we all know it's a bunch of crap. It just makes me sad, honestly, because I'm watching the destruction of my republic. I'm watching these people give us the bird and say, yeah, we're going to do what we want to do and we're going to destroy this place. And it's like you have to ask yourself the question, like, is Donald Trump one guy worth all this destruction, the destruction of all our institutions? Is he really worth all this? No. And it's really mind blowing how the Democrats have become everything they claim to hate. They support censorship. They support war. They support the 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 totalitarianism of, of our government. They support the government overlords having having say in, in everything that we do. It has become really weird. They've become the party of the elite ruling class, the the corporate donors. It's it's truly bizarre. They become the party of the rich. And Republicans, believe it or not, have become the party of the middle class, the the working middle class. Very weird. Very weird switch that we've seen. And I, I don't know if anybody can explain it, honestly. I've been thinking a lot about it. And and I'm I'm still baffled as to how this big switch happened. You know, how did how did all of a sudden Republicans are supporting and, you know, are, are more isolationists? We we don't you know, we want secure borders. You know, it used to be Republicans wanted as, as much immigration as possible because it was free, cheap labor. But now we want secure borders. We want to keep our country safe and, and us, our southern border secure. You are anti-war now. We're a little bit more on the isolate on the isolationist side. We're, you know, they're pro middle class working people, anti-union. It's just, it's really crazy, man. Really, it really is. Um, so this is crazy. So I got an article here from Revolver News. This came out July 28th, about five days ago. Another climate hoax debunked in Italy. Police drone catches suspect arsonist in the act. So essentially, just like I knew was happening is you have environmental activists going around and starting these forest fires so that they can report on the news as climate change being an existential threat. That is what's happening. So the media and the left always goes into full-blown climate disaster mode every summer. Suddenly, hot summer weather becomes deadly climate change, and weather maps start looking like the bowels of hell are opening up and swallowing the earth whole. 
<laughs> it's true, man. You notice how, and this is how, this is part of the manipulation tactic that the media uses. You notice how the weather maps are like red and black. So they change the colors. So like they have like this really creepy, scary color on the map now. So it starts off with like a really dark kind of yellow and then it goes into like a really blackish red. And they really do that, that they do that honestly to manipulate people. That's what they do. It's kind of just like the COVID death tickers at the bottom of the news screens. You guys remember that where they were rolling the deaths from COVID at the bottom of the news on every single left wing news outlet. They had the death tickers and then they would just sit there and everybody knew what it was. It was like, well, why are they showing us how many people are dying every second? Man, this is sad. They were using it so that they can manipulate the public into hating Donald Trump. That's what it was. That's what it was for. This is what they do, man. We have a media that has failed us. They have turned into a, a apparatus for the Democrat Party, for the police state. That is what they are. They pick sides and they pick the wrong side. They pick the side of totalitarianism. So every single time there's a wildfire, like the ones we just saw in Canada, the climate junkies start spreading the same tired lies over and over about the climate is causing all these fires and to spontaneously erupt. In reality, it's always arsonists or lightning. Yeah. So and right on cue, the wildfires in Sealy and Sardinia are being blamed on climate change. However, once again, it looks as if these latest wildfires in Italy are less about the climate and more about an alleged arsonist who was caught by a police drone camera. Yeah, I, I wish this was video. It's just audio and there's no there's nobody saying anything. There's a, it's a video of a guy. He's on a dirt bike riding in no no joke in the middle of the woods on a dirt bike lighting fires. That is what he's doing. And so he got caught by a police drone and then he starts, he sees the drone and he starts throwing stuff at the drone and then he just takes off on his dirt bike. So this is what's happening. This is why you can't trust anything. Everything these people tell you is a lie. Everything. Nothing is what they tell you it is. Nothing. And I mean this for everything when it comes to elections, when it comes to the war in Ukraine, when it comes to climate change, when it comes to the Biden administration and the economy, when it comes to our schools, when it, everything, every single thing they tell you is a lie. They are trying to manipulate the people and they've been very effective at it the last 50 decades, the last 50 years. That is until social media and alternative media outlets like podcasts and radio. Well, they've always had radio, but like podcasts and YouTube, that's, that's what, that's what it is. And so now people are starting to get more sources of, of news. They're starting to have more outlets for media. And so now people can, they get sources from all over the place. It's incredible. It really is. And this is why the more information that people have, the more censorship the Democrats want. They can't be having all this this media. They can't be having people finding out that the Ukraine war is not really about freedom and democracy, but about bio labs. OK, they, they can't find out about how these countries around the world are replacing the U.S. currency. They can't have that. They can't have, you know, the election issues, pro all the problems that happened in the 2020 election. People can't see that. They don't want people to see that because it makes people question everything. And frankly, if the government was just honest with people, you wouldn't have so many conspiracy theories. But because the government hides everything from the people and they're never honest about anything, like January 6th, we still to this day, even though Trump, Donald Trump is being indicted for the riots on January 6th, we still don't know how many undercover informants were at January 6th that day inciting the riot. We already know there was like 40. OK, how many of them inside of the riot? So here it is. We don't even know if it was actual MAGA people, if it was actually Trump supporters that started the riot. We don't even know. You can't honestly sit there and say for 100 percent certainty Trump supporters started that riot. We don't know. It could have been all undercover informants that started breaking out windows and pushing over bike racks to, to get people riled up. We don't know. This is why the government is awful. This is why the government is failing the American people because they're not being honest, man. People just want the damn truth. And not just that, the JFK assassination, everything, the Hunter Biden laptop, the FBI hiding. To, I mean, they, they, the Hunter Biden laptop story came out a week before the election 
and the entire whole of government made a coordinated effort to censor the information from getting out to the American people. And now we know, poll after poll has said, if people have known about that laptop, if people have known about the Biden corruption, they wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden. Therefore, we would not be in this mess right now. There wouldn't be record inflation. There wouldn't be record gas prices. There wouldn't be record uh, supply chain shortages. There wouldn't be all this misery and pain if the damn government was just honest with the American people. But now they're just straight up arresting their political opponents now. Now it's the FBI. It's the bureaucracy that's going to pick who runs for president and who doesn't. It's the bureaucracy, the, the Washington establishment, the, the political elite that are going to decide what you can see, what you can't see, what you can say and what you can't say. This is what we're watching right now. This is we're watching the rise of totalitarianism. And all of this could have been averted if the United States government, if the federal government was just honest with people and stop bullshitting people, man. Unclassify everything. I'm not talking about war plans and war strategies that the United States military has. I'm talking about the JFK assassination, the assassination record on declassify all this. Where's the black book, the clients list from Epstein? Where's that damn thing at? Is it not completely obvious to people that that clients list is being held up is probably destroyed? We'll probably never see that in our lifetimes because it's filled, filled with political elites and the rich people in this country and throughout this world. So we have a two-tier justice system. We have a two-class society. The rich are getting richer. The poor are getting poorer. And all this is because of government, man. I never used to talk like this. I never did. I was pro-FBI, would cooperate. Hell, I even wanted to be an FBI agent at one time. I think there's great FBI agents. Obviously, they're not all bad. But the institution itself has failed the American people. So it needs to be dissolved and disbanded and dissolved and disbanded. Same thing with the DOE, same thing with the DOJ. The, the DOJ needs cleaned out. I know you can't ban the DOJ or, or dissolve it, but I mean, the, the Constitution was here well before the Department of Justice. So the, the Department of Justice is not mentioned anywhere in the Constitution, and that's for a reason, because it wasn't around. So the Founding Fathers didn't have no Department of Justice. That came later. So. Anyways, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I think the theme of the story is just nothing this government tells you is right. So nothing coming out of any of these indictments is accurate. It's all a just one giant lie. The government uses the media to manipulate people to control the behaviors of the public. That is what they do, and they've been doing it for a long time. I'm not saying this is something new. The reason why it's so obvious is people have alternate means of information now. We are officially in information warfare where you can have – you can get your information from one source and live in a completely different reality than everyone else. These people that listen to CNN and MSNBC and nothing but them outlets, they are living in a completely different reality than the rest of us because CNN and MSNBC aren't even talking about Devin Archer. They're not even talking about Hunter Biden and the, and the Biden corruption and the CEFC. Not even talking about any of that. The New York Times or the Washington Post didn't have the Devin Archer testimony on the front pages of their newspaper. What did they have? The Trump indictment. It's because they are propaganda arms, folks. This is what they do. Everybody is starting to notice it now. And I thank God. I thank God. And this is what makes me feel really good about the 2024 election is that regular American people are starting to notice things now. And this is why the government... And the corrupt Washington swamp, the establishment, are getting more and more desperate, doing things they normally wouldn't do, like indicting former presidents. We have them backed up into a corner, and they're going to lash out. And I never told anybody this was going to be easy, but I promise you it'll be worth it. People need to wake up. People need to get involved. And, and like I said, I, I know it's not going to be easy. I know it's not. But it's not like people are asking you to storm the beaches of Normandy here. All we're asking is just to pay attention, speak up, coordinate, talk with your neighbors, get on social media, post a video, clip an audio out of this podcast if you want, or create your own podcast, create your own YouTube channel, 
but just talk about it. Talk about it with your neighbors. Do not normalize this behavior because it, because it is not normal behavior. This this kind of behavior cannot be normalized. This indictments of former presidents and and criminalizing politics, criminalizing the free speech. This stuff is madness. Madness. And we cannot let our country be overtaken by the rich, corrupt establishment swamp. We can't. This is our country, and it's time we take it back. And so come 2024, you have a choice to make. You either allow these people to continue holding on to the levers of power with their old, crusty, corrupt hands, or you vote to get your country back. Whether that's Donald Trump, whether it's Ron DeSantis, it doesn't even matter to me anymore. Okay, it doesn't even matter. What matters is winning, because I'll tell you what, this election coming up will be the most important election in your lifetimes, in our lifetimes, in this generation. It is not a election about Republicans versus Democrats. This is an election about the system versus the people. And the people are either going to want to take their country back and rid this fourth branch of government from our institutions, or they don't. And I'm dead honest, I think there's a lot of lot of people that like being plugged up to the matrix. There's a lot of people that like being lied to. They don't care just so long as you give them their paycheck and you let them live their lives. And I get it. Okay, I get it. You know, just like in the movie in, in the matrix where he, he doesn't want to be unplugged. He wants to stay in the matrix and he takes a bite of that steak and it tastes so good. It's the perfect steak. And he looks at the agent and he says, Ignorance is bliss. Because a lot of people really do think that way. But I'm begging you, I promise you, it will be worth it in the end to get your country that the founders intended for you to have so that your kids can live in a free and just country. And we won't have to be controlled about what we drive or where we live or what we eat or what we can say or what we can think. Your kids and your grandkids will have the God-given rights that they were meant to have, the rights the founders wanted you to have. And so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today's show. As always, thank you for tuning in, and I will leave all the research media I use for the show in my podcast description. So if you want to go back and look at the research materials, I only read bits and pieces of the articles. They're really usually long articles. I already read them beforehand, but they usually are interesting articles, and I'll just pick either the headline or a few paragraphs out of it to read. But if you want to read all of the article, and I suggest that you do, I'm going to leave that on my podcast description, and you could check it out there. I, I encourage my listeners to read all the articles that I talk about because if they're important to me, I think you'll be, I think you, it, it, I think it would be in your best interest to read them because. Like I said, I read things that I feel like my listeners need to know about and that I feel like they need to be up to date on. And so that's how I pick the articles. And, and you know, and I also talk about stuff that I'm interested in, too. And I think I'm, I may start um, doing some sciencey stuff on the weekends. I don't know. I'm really looking into kind of breaking off into some other stuff like archaeology and scientific astronomy, astrophysics and stuff like that. I really I'm really into like the black holes, the universe and uh, multi universes and stuff like that. UFOs, not so much. Not really my bag. Um, I, this whole UFO uh, testimony, I think it was a giant distraction, but I, I think it hints at the bigger point that the government just continues to lie and cover things up uh, from the American people. So I think that's what that whole spiel was about, but I didn't really get into it, so I didn't really talk about it on the show. But I kind of want to break off and do something else on the weekends for you guys and do some cool stuff. We'll get in all kinds of stuff. We're going to start doing interviews soon. I got some people that I'm working with that are going to – and, you know, I got John Strand, the, the J6 prisoner. He said the, he could do interviews, and so I want to get him on the phone. We got all kinds of stuff. It's, it's going to be exciting, folks. I, we're, we're getting there. This is episode 79, and I can't believe it's already F- episode 79. I'm still learning a lot about how to do podcasts, how to do research materials. I don't have a producer. I do all this myself, and I go to work every single day, and I bust my ass just like you. So I, I am not, I don't get paid for this. I'm not making a bunch of money off of this. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I do it strictly because I love my country and I know that informed people make the best decisions and uninformed people make bad decisions. And so I just feel like in 2020, 
what happened was there was just a lot of uninformed people. And I just feel like I could do my part if there's something that I can offer this country and there's something that I have that I can give to this country to make it better and save this country from what we're witnessing, totalitarianism, then I will. And the only thing I could have, I could think of is just get involved with, with my politics. I was already reading in this stuff anyways. I was already into politics. I was already reading a lot every single day. So I figured I would just get on here. I would start a podcast and talk to the world about what I feel and what I notice and the patterns I recognize and the patterns I notice and the things that I'm seeing and, and stuff that I can see happening down the road. And I feel like I just, I, I don't know. I just feel like if I had something to offer, then I'm, that's what I'm doing. So like I said, I'm episode 79. I'm still learning a lot. And I just thank you guys for sticking in there with me. I really do. It means a lot to me. And I, I really do do the show for you. And, and I just hope that you like it. And if there's, you know, if there's something I'm doing wrong, let me know. My only feedback is from you. So I have no idea how I'm doing unless you let me know. So send me an email. Get a hold of me, stephentoriellowshow at gmail.com. I promise you I will respond back. Send me an email. Let me know if you like the show. Let me know if there's something you could change. If you got an article you want me to look at, send it to me. I'll take a look. If it's something really cool, I'll read it on the air. And and we can then that's what we'll do. But in order for me to get better, I need I need some feedback from you. So that's what we're gonna do. So all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, I want you guys to have a good day, have a great week. God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.